Hello everyone, welcome you all to Eternal IAS. And in today's lecture, we are going to solve another set of five MCQs. And this is the day 37 of our MCQ series. Uh, by mistakenly, I wrote 36. And in today's series, we are going to see that what exactly can be the questions from the current affairs point of view. And you can also study these current affairs questions for the upcoming exam. Okay, then let's see the questions. Question number one is all about the big butchering, yeah, big butchering scam. Recently, the scam, big butchering scam was in news and online scammers are using this deceptive tactics to befriend their victims and tricking them into cryptocurrency trading through a fake app. So that's why this big butchering scam was in news recently, right? It is a kind of a scam which in which a person is like to tricking their confidence and investment fraud in which the victim is gradually turned into making increasing contributions in the form of cryptocurrency only. And it looks like a good investment before the scammer appears. Okay, so it, it means like practice of fattening a hog before it's slaughtered. So you can see it here. You can see the questions here. Big butchering scams, big butchering scams also you can call it as. See, this scam was in, was like, it is not a new scam, but yes, recently it was in news due to different facts. Okay, big butchering scam. Like it is a it is a scam where the scammer acts like a friend, right? And also some of the founders of uh, big companies they are also telling people to like control it and no sh you should know about the big big butchering scam, okay? And this type of fraud first originated in the Southeast Asia, and then it evolved in the other countries as well. So you can read here the use of emails and text messages that contain malicious links to steal personal information. The use of phone calls. This B is the correct answers. Or you can say C is the more appropriate. B is also one of the correct, but C is more appropriate. The use of fake profiles to gain users trust and then induce them to send money for jobs and high profile investments in the cryptocurrency. So the answer for the question will be question number third. And the globally impact has included significant financial losses, human rights issues associated with the big bridging scams. And uh, it highlights that there is an urgent need for the increased awareness, prevention measures and international cooperation to combat this newly came up problem. This, this is a new problem. I'm not saying this is a very, very old, but yes, not very much new. But recently in news because people have like uh, scammed by this thing. Okay, so you can write down these notes. Moving on to the next question. Second number question you can see here. Recently, carcinogen compounds have been found in the uh, dyes. So, governments are seeing red on the rhodamine B in the street food. Recently, Tamil Nadu government has also banned the sale of candy, cotton candy, because it contains the presence of rhodamine B, an industrial dye, right? And it can be seen in the samples recently. That's why, again, this topic was in news. So, now we have to understand here. Which compound or which component has the carcinogen here? You can see it here. Dye in the paper industry, do they have the carcinogen? Exactly, yes. They are having the rhodamine B application, which contains the carcinogen. Okay. So, rhodamine B is a chemical compound and it is also a dye. So, you can read it here, rhodamine B. Uh, Exactly this topic was in news. Rhodamine B, it is a water-soluble chemical compound. 
and tamil nadu government has banned the sale or production of cotton candy in the state after it was found that chemical rhodamine b was used in being making it okay why it is harmful because researchers have find out that if food containing the chemical is consumed regularly it can cause damage to the cerebellum tissue of the brain and to the brain stem that connects the brain to the spinal cord and these damages can lead to functional abnormalities and can hinder the human's motor functioning as well as this chemical is toxic for humans and can cause oxidative stress on the cells and tissues if ingested and it particularly becomes hazardous when it is mixed with food products leading to cancer and tumor over the time right so all of these you can see all the four components has the carcinogen compounds in it and that's why this topic was in news right and this rhodamine b it is commonly used with the synthetic dyes commonly used like recently karnataka government has also banned the use of cotton candy as well as gobi manchurian okay and according to fssai no coloring matter should be added to food unless permitted okay so that's why all the four options are correct here you can read it here and the soda mine b is used in synthetic dyes for coloring the silk jute cotton leather wool as well as it is used in the metal uh, cleating reagent food coloring cosmetics plastic industries as well so you can write it down here okay moving on to the next question third question is all about the eurasian economic union what is it eurasian economic union so let us understand what is about the news recently eurasian economic union recently it was in news because the foreign affairs minister of the belarus they were, he was on a visit to india so let us see about the eurasian economic union eurasian economic union is a economic union of five post soviet states of eurasia okay and uh, the member state of these are russia armenia belarus kazakhstan kyrgyzstan not china and not korea first is wrong who are the members russia belarus armenia kyrgyzstan and kazakhstan okay established in 1994 you can see here they have a currency they do not have a new currency replacing the no no this is not the thing currency is about the armenian dram belarusian ruble kazakhstan the currency is tenge kyrgyzstan som and also russian ruble so there is no single currency for that okay india has signed a free trade agreement this is totally correct india is uh, going and doing with this so this is right fta with eurasian economic union that's why this topic was in news so option 3 was only correct whereas the rest of the options are totally wrong and this question is very much important from the examination point of view and 100% you are going to find this kind of question in exam right see this kind of question upsc tends to ask these kind of questions okay so you all have to do these questions regularly so that none of the question should be missed okay so try to write these facts try to note down these things moving on to the third fourth question exploration licenses and mineral auctions you can see here india has started doing this exploration of the licenses and state government has also issued these things so that's why this topic was in news so let us see what is the main objective of this or everything you can see here see state government of karnataka and rajasthan are the first state who started notifying the auction of exploration licensing for deep seated minerals but the here written is tamil nadu and rajasthan wrong karnataka and rajasthan are the were the first two states who have started the auction for this 
So that's why the answer for the question C option will be totally wrong. Right. And if I talk about the another thing, exploration licenses. You can read the statements first so that I can tell you about this. Because minerals are at the auction series and that's why we are studying this topic. It can be granted for all the minerals which are specified in the seventh schedule through auction. Okay. So that's why first statement is totally correct. First statement you can see is totally correct. In Rajasthan and Karnataka, they, are, they have launched that all the critical and deep-seated minerals like gold, copper, lithium, they can explore and the auction for this has already been started. Okay, so that's why the first statement is totally right and second statement is also right. Amendment Act has been already done. So only two statements are right. Only two. A and B will be the correct answer for the question. Okay, this topic, it was actually in news recently. So I will say all of you to learn this. Okay. okay, moving on to the last question of the series. You have to tell the name of the person, the person who is a social reformer, educationist, philanthropist, who is also known as the architect of Mumbai. And also he became the first Indian to be nominated to the Legislative Council of Bombay, greatly inspired by the legendary merchant and philanthropist, Sir Jemshisti Gigi Bhoy. So who is that person? And recently this person uh, was in news. The name, you have to identify the name of a person. Why this person was in news? Let me tell you here. Because the uh, government of Bombay, they are changing the name of Mumbai Central to the Nana Jagannath Shankarnath Station. Right? So that's why this topic was in news. He was known as Nana Shankarnath, who is an Indian philanthropist and educationist, born in the Thane area and... Uh, that personality was one of the founding members of Great Indian Peninsula Railway. Along with this person, he, this, uh, he was greatly inspired by Sir James G. 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 Boy. Okay. And let us see some other important facts. Shankar Seth became an active leader in many arenas of the life in Mumbai. And... Uh, he opened first ever school for girls also in Mumbai in 1849 and he was one of the founding members of Native School of Bombay and uh, this person also like he firstly he did something for the Elifstone Educational Institution then he attended that school and then Gopal Krishna Gokhale Lokmanya Tilak also attended the school Right. He opened girls school. He denoted, he donated thousands of acres of land for the development of Mumbai. So you can say he is the architect of Mumbai. He established many education institutes in it. He was one of the founders of Bombay Native Education Society. Right. And uh, by the efforts of Shankar Seth, Hind Shala and School Book Society also got founded. So there are so many developmental works he had done. Also, he was the first Indian member of Asiatic Society of Mumbai. So, if you are studying about the Mumbai or you are giving a paper for MPPCS, you are going to surely study about this personality. So, these were the five important topics for today. You can all, all, all of you, you can learn these topics, you can note these topics and uh, I will meet you all in the next lecture. With another set of five questions. If you know the answer of these questions, well and good. If you don't know the answers, then you should learn these concepts and try to write these in your notes. Okay, then meet you all in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Jai.